Regular Council meeting, Monday, May 4th, 2015, 7 p.m. when I'll come to order. We have a roll call, please. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambach. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Craybock. Here. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. All present. Thank you. Appreciate that. We'll now have the invocation by Jeff Christmas from the First Baptist Church. Would you all rise, please? Would you all join with me in bowing for prayer? Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight on a beautiful day that you provided for us. We're thankful that you've given us the opportunity to meet and conduct the business of our fair city. We're thankful, Lord, for those that you put in authority over us, and we pray, Lord, that we would support them. And Lord, we thank you that we're able to, to live in a country that's free. And Father, we pray that we would never take that for granted. Father, tonight as business is conducted, we pray that we would again lend our support. And Father, as we conduct ourselves, we pray that we would do so in a way, in a manner that's pleasing to you. For we ask these things in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Christmas. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, will you face the back and use that flag, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, everybody can be seated, please. Oh. Somebody grab the door, please, pull it shut. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Appreciate it. What did he, say? he said you'll get his bill. We have plenty of those. Thank you. A little housekeeping ahead of time. If you have a cell phone, if you please turn it off or put it on vibrate, please, so we don't interrupt the meeting. Certainly appreciate it. Also, I'd like everybody to know the shelter house is for rent. This shelter house, it has air conditioning. Of course, it has heat in the winter. You need to call the city building, which is 845-9492, and I'm sure that you'll be helped to find out if it's an open date. Also, we have lots for sale at the cemetery. If you are so inclined that you would like a lot at the Nukolaus Cemetery, once again, if you call the city building, I'm sure they'll be able to help you and show you what's available. So now we'll go forward. Uh, action on the minutes of the regular meeting. Well, shall we go to the special first? April, regular meeting first. All right, regular meeting April 20, 2015, please. So moved. Second. I have two simultaneous ties there. Pick one. Mr. Craig Barker, the motion. Mr. Reynolds, the second? Yes. Any questions, anyone? Call for the vote, sir. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craig Barker? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. Now we had a special meeting April 27, 2015. Make Action. Motion. Make a motion to pass. Second. Any questions? Council, any questions? Call for the vote, please. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Freebaugh? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Any communications tonight? None? Uh, we'll now go into the city manager's report. Uh, Mr. Manager, did you want to read what you'd sent out to everyone? Yes, yeah, sure. Mr. Manager, if you would please stand up so I can see everyone. That would be fine. Great. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Randy Bridge. I've been uh, selected by the city council here to be the next city manager. I'd like to share with you a letter that I sent out last week to all city council and staff. I think it gives a good um, effort of transparency, but also gives the citizens a good idea of what I plan to do by uh, here in the city of Carlisle. And it reads as, as such. Dear city employees and council members, 
It's an honor to have been named the next city manager of New Carlisle. I look forward to working closely with each of you. I appreciate your dedication and service to both past public employees because it's people like you that make great towns. Working as a planning director in the past few years has, has been a wonderful experience with you all. Let's, I wish to continue these. There's no question we are facing some difficult times. Budget issues, bad press, employee re resignations have been in full force. Finances are tight. Not only do we need to focus on the present, we also need to focus on the budget's future health. In the meantime, please continue in, in your efforts in preventing uh, any unforeseen expenses. In the coming weeks, I will begin to study each city department and have a better understanding of their operating procedures. As expected, we will then be looking at measures to increase efficiency throughout all city operations. I'm looking forward to collaborate, collaborate, collaborating and collaborating his underlines with each of you to improve these efficiencies. To ease any job security concerns, no one is in any danger of losing their employment to budgetary constraints. Be assured I will have a very involved, visible, hands-on, and, tra and transparent approach to city management. In an effort to be as transparent as possible, over the next several months, I will be focusing on the budget, legal matters, depart department operations, the pool, public safety, economic development, and further learning the roles and responsibilities of my new position. Each day I, I will give my best to serve the citizens of New Carlisle. I expect the same from you. Honesty, respect, professionalism, tolerance, dependability, reliability, compassion, and ethics are personal attributes that create positive and productive workplace cultures. Let's strive for that. Always know that I am concerned about your well-being and that my door is always open. And appreciation, Randy Bridge, City Manager. Thank you, sir. Sure. Appreciate that. So now the city manager's report, if you would, please. Sure. Uh, I'd like to jump down to G, uh, G informational items, and that's a motion to accept Speedway site plan dated March 20, 2014. We do have a representative here from Speedway. If I can call him, please. Mr. Sweet. Everyone, this is Rob Sweet. He's representative from Sir Speedway. Good evening. Welcome. Um, we're here tonight requesting approval of Ordinance-15-16 uh, for the uh, vacating a portion of the alley between West Lake Street and West Lincoln Street. We also have a site plan that was recently approved by Planning Commission as well as the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, on April 16th. So I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, we look forward to rebuilding the store at 319 North Main Street um, and looking forward to answering any questions Council may have. Council, any questions for the gentleman? Yes, sir. Let's go with Mr. Zandok first. Mine's an easy one. Okay. I was just looking at this. Picture yes. Of the elevation of the sign. I noticed it shows E85. Is that just an illustration, or are you planning? We will have. We will offer E85 fuel there. Thank you. Yep. Mr. McIntyre. As far as how the store is actually going to work or look, will it resemble the one that is by uh, Stebbins High School? Um, if you're not too sure, not too sure I know where you're at, but if you hold that thought for a moment, I can bring up the set of elevations. Fantastic, thank you. Mr. Sweet, do you need some help? Sure. Sure. It's a newer design. It's, it's a uh, it's a quick building with a main entry on that faces North Main, then an entry on Lake Street. This is a six uh, fuel expensive canopy. And it has like a like a deli restaurant sort of thing. Correct, okay. correct. It's got the cat, speedy cafe in it, uh, which provides some additional food options for the city. Um, this, this is back here is the dumpster enclosure. It's completely, completely screened. Separating the properties, we will have a, a body fence up in between separating the properties that join us on the south side. And that building is going to be close to Church Street, is that correct? Correct. So everybody will know that. So you're purchasing three other houses? I believe it's, I believe it's three, three, houses. three other houses that we're purchasing. Take, take those down. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, anyone? Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Uh, Craywell. The ordinance is to vacate part of the alleyway. Correct. And it says 160... 62 plus minus feet. Okay, now, I'm going to ask this because, you know, I'm a visual person. Uh, what's that going to do with Lee's chicken? Coming down that alley. That I'm not sure of. 
um, the, the portion of the property that we're looking to vacate is essential to our property so we cost both of the properties. Um, as far as the movement of lease, I'm not too sure how that's going to go. Randy, do you? They'll solve that access. It's not going to be cut off down by him, and they can go through his parking lot to get the back of the yeah, they'll be able to go through, John. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. But I asked a lot of questions. Sure. Before about the driveways. And sure. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. Um, and can you just kind of briefly tell? We've got a lot more people here today. About you know, the, I know there's only going to be one driveway going out to Main Street. Correct. But Correct. right now there's two driveways the, going out to Main Street. The current configuration of the driveways will be re will be reorganized, if you will. And the driveway, I would say, closest to the southern property line along Main Street will be approximately 53 feet. And this is essential for our site due to our fuel trucks delivering the vehicle <coughs> from June out of the store without causing the double warning. We will have the driveway on Lake Street almost pretty much where the alley ends right now, maybe shifted a couple feet east-west, just depending on the alignment. Um, and that driveway is about 35 feet. Again, that's going to help our fuel tanker come in and unload fuel and then exit through Main Street. There's a driveway, I believe it's is it Church Street that sits on the back Church, side? yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a driveway on Church Street. This driveway is about 28 feet wide, and it's designed primarily for the residents or for vehicles to use, no large trucks, nothing of that nature that are off the Church Street. I also noticed the tank's going to be further front. Correct. Toward Main Street. Correct. Is there any safety? Gadgets on it in case it, you know, it does leak or does those are those are all installed to state requirements. <coughs> they meet all the state requirements. On top of that, they have double sealed, double wall tanks. So it's the newest technology that they have on now. Uh, they will have ga leak gauges and protection gauges on them. Rusty, am I missing anything on that? Okay. Mr. Lowry, you have yes. some question. How many employees at the present Speedway, and how many at the new employees? It's probably going to have around the same. I believe okay. it's probably maybe 15 to 20 employees. Okay. In the new store, we'll have about 15 to 20, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Okay. The staff, we, we heard the request from the Planning Commission at the last meeting, and our construction folks are working with the operation folks to make sure that their employees are maintained to the fullest extent. We okay. have no control over that. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I ask the city manager a question? Please? Why not? Okay. Randy, we'll. Traffic have to be changed, or there have to be any more or there any direction signals have to be changed, or any more lines for turning traffic or anything to change? Anything different on Lake and Main or anything? Not on Lake and Main on church there's there's pro uh, pro proposing a few uh, no parking okay. signs okay. so when the truck would if the truck would have to turn on that street they would okay. have clear clear okay. entrance. But the no parking that would be in front of the the one house is the Vargas house in the corner there that is vacant. They're still working on it. And the other one is the um, White House next to um, the old April's pet, pet grooming. Right. They have plenty of access parking in the back. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Sure. Mr. Lowry. Yeah, Mr. Bridge. Um, with the church and, and lake, if I'm looking at this right, there's this is going to be open as far as, you know, entrance and exits on church and lake. Yeah. And with this being directly across from the post office, is this going to cause a lot of? I don't. I mean, I don't. I, we we talked about that. We don't feel it's going to cause too much of an issue. Um, the post office is not a very heavily traveled, you know, uh, place. I mean, we do get a lot of a few cars coming in and out, but I don't think it would be enough to constitute a hazard. Absolutely not. Okay. Is that the question you're asking? Yeah, that's it. I mean, is there? Will there be signs or some other? Posting saying that this is an exit only or an entrance only at that For corner. On maybe I'm not understanding what you're asking me. You, okay, I know this is small. You guys can't see this, but this is this is church. This is this is this is Westlake. Oh, you got it. Cool. Yeah. Okay. It, so this driveway here. This would be the this is where the driveway is now. This is the existing sanitary line in where the alley comes down. Okay. Now you go to your left. Right there at that corner, it looks like it's pretty much that corner is open up for cars to go in and out. Right here? Yeah, in that area. Okay. For the for the post office or for our site? For, for traffic in general, off of, off of Lake and Church. 
traffic will be maintained. Maybe I'm not Let me back it up, sir. <laughs> Access the speedway. Here's you think it's all open. Just try to get Yep. And this is the corner lot of speedway. Correct. Correct. Can cars be coming in and out? No, there's yeah. an access. Yeah, there's yeah. A, these access points will be closed off. Okay. There's only gonna, this will occur. There's only going to have one access point on Lake, one access point on Church, and one access point on Lake. Okay. Just I thought this was the curve. No. No. This is this is the existing curve that's out there now. This will be replaced. As necessary, so you will not be able okay. to enter in back right here. Okay. All the parking on the side will be along the front and to the side. Okay. See, there be there was there's actually two on there now. They're closing the one closest to the traffic light. Yeah, I'm gonna say there's about so five that'll driveways be, associated that's with the side. Okay. That number for five. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Roberts has a question. Uh, when's the start date and finish date? Good question. We will not start until we have all permits obtained. Through the proper agencies. Um, we're hoping to get this started later on this summer, if you will. Um, but typically, whenever we get that started and we get this thing permitted, it takes us about 80 to 90 days to reproduce. Okay, all set? Council, all set? One more time. One more time, sorry. Um, I noticed the same thing, you did the same thing in Springfield on Limestone Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, they, it's going to be done almost identically to the same thing. Correct. Right. I've watched that being built and everything. But I also have been watching, um, since my son lives down that way, Sure. Uh, I've been watching the traffic count increase, incredible amount of traffic uh, goes in and out of that. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have any statistics on what the traffic count proposed can be? We do not. Not that I know of. Uh, I'll be honest, I am pinching for the other guy that's, that's kind of taking care of this. As far as I know, I, I do not know if the traffic study has been done. Um, if, it, if one was required, it would have been submitted with that application. Because that, that station always did business. Sure. sure. I, would, I would imagine that our traffic count would be about the same. Thank you. Citizens, anyone have a question for the gentleman? It hasn't been answered at this point. Can you keep the other speedway open too? Correct. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor, I actually have a follow-up question. All right, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, what's the investment worth of this building going into the town? These are typically anywhere from three to five million dollars, not including any cost of land. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for no the presentation. Problem, thank you all. Appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Bridges, would you like to continue? That is all I have for the manager's report. Okay. Uh, then we shall go to uh, our comments from members of the public. Anyone like to speak tonight? I need you to go to the podium, your name and address, if you would, please. Thank you. I'm Phil Baker, lifetime resident of New Carlisle, also a member of the present fire division. And as you know, you have received an anonymous letter from someone in this department. I suspect it be one or two people. It does not reflect the entire division. Uh, I, I'm surprised that somebody would be coward enough to submit an anonymous letter. If we have something to submit, we will do it as a group. Since in the last week, I have talked to probably 18 different people who did not know anything about this letter, do, does not support it. So my point is, it's not a full volunteer department comment. Thank you, sir. I'm, I know that if you'll bear with me, well, would you like to, I didn't hear his last statement. Mr. Baker? Baker? No, no it's it, it is not, and I didn't catch what you said. I mean, I, I'm it is sorry. not a total in, uh, fire division comment. Okay, thank you. And almost half of us knew nothing about it until we saw it in writing. Okay. And that's the point I want to make. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, we'll have the city manager say something on that, please. Mr. Baker, thank you for coming and voicing your opinion about this matter. Um, I know you, and when you first started up there discussing, you had threw out some numbers, 18. Can you revisit that for me and tell me a ballpark about how many people didn't know about this letter versus how many you think it is? Yes, we had um, 
We had a training the other night, the night after the letter, the first I saw the letter, we had 13 people at the training. They knew nothing about this letter prior to that time. I tend to walk the city every day and typically stop in the fire station to visit. Each time I stopped in, people have approached me or asked me, and they were not aware of it prior to this being published. So that's how I come up with my 18. Okay. If I had more time, I think I'd come up with more. So we can assume by your comments that that letter was not from the majority of the fire department. That's my opinion. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mayor, if I may, we need to, let's make sure we get this right. We need to back up. Uh, do we need a motion to approve the site plan? From the council, yes. We bring, it, we bring site plans to courtesy of the council. That's true. I thought that was what we were doing on the ordinance. Well, that's for the alley vacation. Okay, so oh, we need the site plan. Yes. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Motion to approve the site plan for Speedway. Second. <clears throat> Any comments? Was that you, Mr. Reynolds? No. Yes, yes. Mr. Reynolds. Okay. Any comments, Council? The site plan? Yes. I just want to thank the representative for coming in and being open for questions, both from us and from the uh, from the residents as well. Um, I know this is something a lot of people have been talking about lately, and it's it's great to have someone here who can. Uh, get answers from. So, thank you. Anybody else? There's been a lot of comments, Facebook and other places, about two speedways in town. I don't care. Maybe we can find another corner to say you know, As long as they're operating, they have people working there, and they're paying taxes to the city. If we want to put two more on the other end of town, and you can work that out. <coughs> I'm all for it. <coughs> and I just, you know, I'm tired of listening about people complaining about two speed ways. I, I, I just completely do not understand that. I, I really, really don't. Like we do. The, the city, we get, we obviously get the income tax and stuff like that from workers. We, we get other fuel taxes from that, from that facility as well. But from a speedway standpoint, it almost makes sense, you know. 235 is a pretty heavily traveled north-south route. You know, we got a lot of people with trucks. Um, people going to the lakes with boats, you know, so they capture a lot of that traffic depending on which way you're going. So for them, it's a win-win, and quite frankly, for us, it's a win-win too because Absolutely. it's a business that's going to continue to make money. You know, a restaurant could be hit or miss. You know, uh, a smoke for less could be hit or hit or hit or miss. You know, so that gasoline station is something that will continue on to give us money back. I'd also ask the questions about: Are there other cities that have two speedways? And I was informed that there are quite a few other places that have two speedways. Whether they're right across from each other, I don't know the answer to that. But the communities do have, other communities have them. Any other questions? Would you call for the votes? Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. <coughs> Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Site plan passes seven to zero. Thank you. Appreciate that. Now we'll go back to the city manager report. Thank you for letting us know. Oh, 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 we're already done with you, aren't we? Yeah, I, uh, I, I am done. So we're back to comments from the public. Anyone else like to speak? Would you go to the podium? I need a name. I have a question. I don't live in the city. I'm a city employee of fire Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. You go to the podium. Name and address, please. <coughs> My name is Steve Trusty. I live in uh, Huber Heights. I'm a city employee here, though, of the fire department. As Mr. Baker stated, that that letter that was written was not a majority of the department. It was not. I speak to you as a 35-year veteran of the fire service. Everything from volunteer to where we didn't get paid for anything for 10 years, a 30-year retiree veteran from Wright Path Fire, and now working with New Carlisle. And it saddens me and it angers me that the city people of this town have to put up with that type of bullcrap in a letter and that you council have to waste your time on it because it's ridiculous. When you look at what the, what the present administration, the present chief has done for this department in the short time that he's been there, raises to, be, to, to the people, better equipment for the people, 
better living conditions for the people. New bunk rooms for the people to where we don't have to worry about our female firefighters having to sleep in a day room in a, in a chair or the other firefighters having to sleep in that chair so they can have a, day, a bunk room. And that's a big thing in the, in the fire service nowadays is having that separation from male and female. We now have that. And to see what the, what's been trying to undermine and discredit what's been going on in the department is, is unthinkable. This is a brotherhood and a sisterhood. And we're all here for one reason, to serve. And I hope and I pray as our department, I'm a the firefighter EMT with the department, I'm also the department chaplain. I hope, pray that the council can see the truth that's in this department and it's all good. The only bad morale that I see in this department is the ones that are trying to discredit this department. And today, of all days, May 4th is National Firefighter Appreciation Day. And I know I don't speak alone, but I won't speak for anyone else. I do appreciate Chief Phillips greatly for what he's done for the department, but most of all for what he's done for this city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, just to let everybody know, uh, our city manager is definitely going to be looking into the letter and investigating. So it's not something that's just going by the wayside that he is going to be looking into it. Again, he's new on the job, but he's going to be going there. Mr. Lowry. I'm coming. Yes, sir. I guess to you and to Mr. Bridges. I received that letter. I read about two paragraphs, or not two paragraphs, a couple sentences, and I got curious to see who wrote it, and I turned it over and there was no signature. I can't tell you what the letter said because I threw it away. Um, been involved in a lot of things in my life, uh, but I don't read letters that are not signed. If you're too coward to sign it, it's usually, and I'm not going to read it, I'm not going to understand. That I have problems with the fire department? Absolutely, and I'll sit here and tell everybody that. I have a couple problems, and we won't get into that now. But the main problem I had was listening to some other people who thought they knew everything about it, okay? And I would like to say to you, Mr. Bridges, uh, Mr. Bridges, that I don't believe that the city would spend one nickel into an investigation because of a letter that was written that was not signed. I highly protest that we spend one nickel because of that. Mr. Lyle, there's some pretty serious allegations in that letter. That, that wasn't signed. I can okay, write letters all day long signed or not. Mr. Lyle, it doesn't matter if that letter is signed or not. There's some pretty serious allegations in that letter that can leave the city open for some serious liability lawsuits. We need to take it seriously. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Citizens, anyone else like to speak this evening? Yes, sir. Again, if you go to the podium, name and address, please. <clears throat> My name is Larry Trusty. I'm a firefighter EMT with New Call Fire Division. I also live in the city of New Call As, as um, Steve has said before, this is a brotherhood and sisterhood. We take our job seriously, but also, too, along with that, we love our job. We love serving the citizens of New Call Isle, and that's what we're here for. Never doubt for one minute that we are not here for the public, because we are. We're here to serve you and be here for you 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We take our oath as firefighters, EMTs, and paramedics very seriously. We love what we do, and we will continue to do this. Whatever else may come down for us as a fire department, for us together as brothers and sisters, we will always be here for you, no matter what. And I ask the council and the citizens, please keep your trust and faith in your fire department. We are here for you, and we will do everything in our power to make sure that you are taken care of, you are protected and you are safe. That is all. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Anyone else in the audience? Yes, if you go to the podium, please. Thank you. I'm John Lodge, also a 13 year employee of the city of New Carlisle. I'm a 20 year Firefighter, I uh, worked for the city of uh, Huber Heights 13 of those years as well. 
Biggest concern is coming from another city is we have a policy. A complaint's not formal until it's been submitted and signed in person by the per person following the complaint. Don't know if there's any policy here that would address that or fall into that category. Other issue is, is um, there's a lot of us tied to that letter that uh, signed in a blanket statement that went to the press. And where's the line of lying to the press and uh, false information going to the press as well? <clears throat> That's my biggest concern right now. Thank you, sir. We would not have consented to that either. Everybody I've spoken to is actually very angry. Thank you. Appreciate your input. Anyone else? Any citizen like to speak? Yes, sir. William Lindsay, 314 North Henry Street. Uh, last week, or two weeks ago, uh, Mr. Reynolds and I exchanged some words. Uh, we spoke a couple of days after that, uh, the next day or so, I think. We spoke several times since then. Uh, him and I have patched things over. We understand where each other was coming from. I told him uh, on the phone, on the first conversation, that we had a public argument. I've already apologized to him and vice versa. I'm here basically tonight to apologize to Mr. Reynolds in public. So everybody knows that uh, the newspaper article wasn't a joke or whatever. And uh, the only other thing I got to say is uh, I hope the lever passes and get out and vote. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks for all your help. We certainly appreciate that. Absolutely. Yes. Up one minute. Mr. Reynolds first, please. Mr. Lindsay, I accept your apology. Thank you so much. So. Thank you. Hey, Bill. I want to thank you. Also, personally, you know, about working on the levy, about working on the levy, I want to thank you very much on that. I know you worked hard, and you know you and I pass each other on the street quite often, and, and we speak to each other. You know, so this guy really has a soft heart. Don't let him fool you. Yes. No, don't listen, Mr. Crabbe. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Loud. Uh, real quick, I don't want to get too deep into, into this whole conversation and, and subject, but I just want to thank all the fire department members for being here. I think that alone speaks volumes. I agree with that. Anyone else? Out in the audience, anyone like to speak tonight? This, Reverend I Chris, I would, like to speak. Uh, would you mind going to the podium, if you would, please? We'd love to hear from you. I think uh, what, uh, my name is Jeff Christmas. I live at 1006 North Scott Street, a uh, lifelong resident essentially. Uh, I would, uh, I think what put me over the top to say a word tonight was to know that today is National Firefighters Day and uh, was doing some reading in the paper about the kind of flap about the, the firefighters and I, I must confess that I don't know the details and I really don't need to, to but I do need to know that uh, I want to support our firefighters no matter what. And uh, quite frankly, I suppose I could ask questions if it comes down to the fact that uh, whether our firefighters need uh, a piece of equipment, that uh, whether we need to quibble over whether something costs a little bit more, then maybe we could buy something cheaper. Um, I think if I were to ask a firefighter, if you had a more uh, expensive piece of equipment, how it makes you feel, uh, if it makes you feel supported by our citizens, if it helps you do your job better, if it performs better, I think we should support you in that. And if I could say one for word further about how much I feel we need to support you. Uh, not even a hundred yards from this place, uh, on a terrible day in my life, you guys were there for me when my son was killed. Uh, just by someone thoughtlessly turning their car into his motorcycle. And on that day, you guys uh, probably thought he would make it because it, from all indications, it looked like he would be just fine. And on that day, you carried him to the hospital and somewhere between here and there, he didn't make it, not of no fault of your own. And that day you had to go home to your families and say, gosh, we tried our best and we thought he'd make it and he didn't. And that's a terrible thing that you had to go through. And I just want to say thank you for being there for me and my family. And uh, further, uh, 
as a view of support uh, for you guys. And I want to encourage my fellow citizens to think about doing the same. And I want to do this in an appropriate fashion with the city. I'd like to pledge a donation to our first responders tonight uh, in the amount of $1,000 uh, to show my support uh, for what you mean to our city. And I want to say thank you. Uh, and that's really all I have to say. God bless you, sir. We appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else? Yeah. Well, one more comment. Directly uh, in response to his uh, comments about the fire department and equipment, being a retired firefighter, and I'm sure every one of you on the department in this building will agree, if you have your choice between a piece of equipment that works and don't work, you want the best equipment money can buy. The worst nightmare a firefighter can have is to be in a scene in a fire uh, on an accident and you grab a piece of equipment and it fails. It just absolutely gives you the worst feeling ever. And anytime a firefighter, EMT, paramedic loses somebody, They take it personally. Thank you, sir. One more time. Anyone else? All right, Dewey. My name is Dewey Brosey, and I live on Western Jefferson Street. Years ago, I and three other guys started the squad. To the new rest of I mean the funeral home, with a white Dodge that uh, was donated to the fire department a long time ago. And believe me, in those days, as some of them can contest right now, that we got in some good messes. When you, uh, I don't know whether, uh, when you had to pick a couple kids' brains off the tree. That'll set you back for a couple of days. And I don't know. I feel for these guys that are doing it now, too, because I know what they're going through. And uh, I think that uh, sometimes when the sheriff has to go along with you guys to find out what's going on, you understand, too, what's going on, too. Or you might meet what's on the other side. So I just wanted to let you know that you've got a, a brave and majesty and, uh, and environment to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate the comments. Mr. Zambach, you have a comment? I would like to address the firefighters that are here and those that wrote the letter. I had the opportunity to read the letter but I chose to ignore it because uh, there is no credibility whatsoever in my mind from anonymous letters. So I don't know what it said, and I don't care. Hopefully, whoever did write it will step forward so that they can be held with the program. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else from the public tonight? Yes, please. Captain Bowman. anonymously. I would like to thank Mr. Christian for his support and the donation to the fire department and I would like to say thank you for your service in starting the ambulance and everything and I've got pictures. And it, <laughs> it was. I am a 25 year veteran of the fire service. I too have worked as a volunteer um, I started as an explorer. My dad got into the fire service in 1968, and I've pretty much been raised in the firehouse. Um, I was the first person certified in CPR in the state of Ohio at the youngest age, and I was six at the time. I just want everybody here to know 
that we have good people that work for the fire department. We have amazing paramedics, EMTs. And the reason that we are late here tonight is because we had three runs within an hour's time. We had to call law enforcement in. Um, law enforcement did show up. I was threatened physically by the patient that we were taking in. Unbeknownst to, he had an injury, so it wasn't technically his fault. Um, but I want everybody to know that we do appreciate the support from the community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, we'll move on at this point. Uh, committee reports, none tonight. None tonight. Resolutions, none tonight. Ordinance, would you read uh, Ordinance 1515, please? Ordinance 15 15, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a new backhoe in conjunction with the Ohio Cooperative Purchasing Act. Mr. Mayor. Council, yes. I uh, move to adopt Ordinance 1515. I think we're table. Oh, that's the table one. Table. We that's need the mayor. table, if you would. You want to try again? Yes, Mr. Mayor, move that we table 1515. Thank you. It's not written on my sheet. I'll second. <laughs> second that if it's being tabled. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we should vote on tabling, correct? Any should, comments? I'll probably explain why we need to, why you want to table. Yes, would you like to explain that? Sure, just so the, the public matter? knows, it's, a, it's an ordinance regarding a backhoe purchase for multiple city departments to use. Um, given the current issues facing the city, I have personally not have time to look at all these supporting documents uh, for the purchase. Our service director, Mr. Kiko, has done a fabulous job with gathering all that information. I just have not had time to uh, review that. So I want to make sure that we are doing our due diligence with taxpayer money before we commit to such a purchase. Thank you. Council, any comments? Anyone? Okay. Let's call for the vote, please. Okay, I have a motion to table ordinance 1515. Uh, Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. <clears throat> table seven to zero. Thank you. You would read the next one, please. Ordinance 15-16, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the vacating of a portion of an alley between West Lake Street and West Lincoln Street. So the motion dies for lack so for the record, lack of a vote, correct? For the record, Ordinance 1516 dies to a lack of a motion. Okay, if you would go on with the uh, emergency ordinance, please. Uh, before you do that, uh, basically, would you like to explain why we're doing this, Mr. City Manager, again, please? Sure, sure. Uh, the original language on uh, Ordinance 1516, which is the alley vacation, uh, Speedway Corp was not comfortable with the time, the date that I had set for completion. So they had requested that we amend uh, 1516 that we did introduce at the last council meeting uh, to have more specific language in it to read that it will be done within six months from the start of construction. I said six months from the date that it was uh, dated the site plan, which put it October 31st. They've got to coordinate a bunch of utilities to be relocated. So they have a fear that, you know, because of that massive coordination to relocate those utilities, that that might delay their start time on construction. So um, we just came to an agreement that this language was the best to say six months from the start of construction, because after construction starts, all utilities will be, will be uh, already relocated. Thank you for the explanation. We appreciate it. Now, the ordinance, if you would, please. Ordinance 15-18E, public hearing in action tonight, an ordinance authorizing the vacating of a portion of an alley between West Lake Street and West Lincoln Street and declaring an emergency. Council Mayor. Yes, Mr. Zell. Second. Any questions, Council? Okay, if you call for the vote, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Ordinance 1518E passes 7 to 0. Thank you. When you're ready, would you uh, read the rest of the things, please? Yes, sir. 
Well, actually, let's go into other business first. Is there other business from council? Anyone would like to? I just want to say one more thing. Yes, go ahead, sir. Once again, I want to say thanks to the fire, uh, fire department, the, the folks that showed up from there tonight. Uh, like I said, I think it really speaks loudly that you were all here tonight and your names are here tonight. And I think that that would uh, push the local newspaper to maybe talk to you guys because you're here and you don't have a problem giving your name. I'm not saying that we don't need to look into it, but you're here, your names are here. I, 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 I'm curious to see what's going to happen in the papers in the weeks to come. Uh, you know, you, you, you've stepped up to the plate, you've told us what you feel. That's a, Those are some, some personal uh, information on the inside of the fire department, and I'd like to hopefully see the local newspaper would actually want to get a piece of that information since you're so willing to provide it. So with that being said, I hope, the, I hope the local paper takes advantage of this situation to talk to you guys since you're so eager to do so. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Rackett. Uh, yeah, I want to make a comment about voting. I know that when this, by the time this is shown on YouTube, with the elections will be passed. But for the people here, if you plan on voting, um, recently within the past eight months, since the last election, some of the polling locations have changed. There was an issue with uh, not all of them were ADA compliant, so they they moved some around. So to make sure you know where you're voting at, go to the Board of Elections website for Clark County, and there'll be a little tab on the left that says, am I registered? You click on that, you can put your name in, and they'll tell you exactly where to go to vote, what precinct you're in, so that way you you can get there, get it done, get to the right place, and, and be in and out in a short amount of time. So because polling locations have changed, double check so that way you can have the most efficient use of your time uh, when casting your votes. Thank you. Uh, question on that. I believe, I don't know of any that are not at the school this time around, I don't believe. All Does anyone know that? All three are at the, uh, all three okay. are at the New Corral Elementary School, as far as I know. So that's where you go to vote. Again, it's ADA compliant, and that's the reason they're doing that. And the school is providing a place for that. Other business, anyone else, council? Yes, Mr. Lott. Yes, I would just like to ask everybody to make sure you exercise your right to vote. I would hope that you vote yes for the police letter. The need is real. You can read what you want to in the papers, on social media, where the money was wasted, it was lost, can't be accounted for. Absolutely not true. It's never been proven that any money has been misspent. And I could go on and on and on, but I will not. Been going on for too long, but we need the police department, as you heard these gentlemen right here say about the equipment and what they do. And I stand behind you guys 100% all the way, always have, always will, because I have a couple problems with not, and I don't stand behind every one of you. And I'll discuss with any one of you what my problem is, okay? And it's not personal against the fire department, but at any rate, I put fire department, veterans, and police department all in that same category. Uh, they're out there every day. Don't know if they're coming home at night or not. Uh, we really don't. Uh, we need to give these fellows the best equipment that we can give them. With the money we have right now, we cannot do that. It absolutely can't be done. We can hear people say, well, it was mid-spent years ago. Well, guess what? That doesn't solve the problem. You know, I can tell you, yeah, it was mid-spent. There was money mid-spent years ago. Uh, Madison Street property was mid-spent, but we're still trying to rectify that problem. Same way with the police department. Maybe there was money that's been here as well. I haven't seen it except for Madison Street property when we had a city manager here that didn't do what he should do. But the fact of the matter is, prices on everything that went up, the cars that went up, the gas things went up, well, except for this year, uniforms, everything. And we have not kept pace. We would be in this city. We're bringing in the same money we was five and six years ago. Yes, there was a street levy. Yes, there was a police, or a street levy and a fire department levy does not help the police one bit. We need to put these people on the road, we need to get a couple back, and we need to give them the best protection and best equipment that we can give them. I ask each and every person in this city who lives here to vote yes for the police there. It's not going to be wasted. It's going to be sent on police, not streets, on police, which may be cruisers, which may be equipment, but it is spent on police. And there will be two officers brought back will not happen on Wednesday if, let, if it's approved on Tuesday. It will take some time before the money comes in, okay? But we need those people back. 
Thank you. Please vote. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. Anyone else? Anything? I want to thank everybody for being here this evening, and thank you for all the input. This is a forum that anyone can come to and can speak. We just ask that you go up to the podium, give your name and your address, and keep the decorum that we need in an open forum. Thank you. Now, I'm sorry? Crown watch. No, no, he's going to read. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll call If you would, please. City offices will be closed on Memorial Day, Monday, May 25th. There'll be a joint government meeting Monday, June 29th at 6.30 p.m. hosted here by uh, the City Council here at Smith Park Shelter House. Keep in mind that is open to the public. And there'll be a Crime Watch meeting Wednesday, May 13th. Do I have that correct? Okay. Wednesday, May 13th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. That's all I have here. Thank you, sir. Executive session, there's none tonight. Uh, I thought you would never get to that. <laughs> <laughs> we adjourn. We are adjourned. Again, thank you all for being here. <laughs>